And now we're going to uh, talk about airports, actually, more specifically, Taras Airport. And on the line is the project director, Michael Singleton. Thank you for waiting through that song, Michael. Hi, Liane. Um, no, and I didn't mind that at all, actually. I was quite enjoying it. I was hoping that you liked the song. <laughs> That's good. All right. Because, you know, after all, I mean, you've got uh, a serious job uh, to do, but uh, everyone uh, enjoys a little bit of music, don't they? A bit of light relief. We do. Mm. Now, I have to... Uh, well, I really just want to get an update on, on where things are at because we've heard so much about Terrace and there have been a couple of really good investigative pieces about uh, the plans uh, by Christchurch Airport to, to get this happening in, in the tiny town of Terrace. And... You know, there's always detractors, but I, I'm just curious to know, like, uh, like where where things are at, and are you happy with progress being made? Yeah, look, I think we're making um, we're making good progress, Len. It's a you know one of the things with a you know with projects like this is they're really long term, and there's a lot of work that you have to do um, right from the start to get some of those um, things right. So we're pretty busy with with um, pieces of work around that. But look, you know, we're we're two years in, we're reasonably well placed. Um, I think where we are with some of the early signs of that work, it's it's pretty encouraging um, from where we've we've come from. Of course, uh, you know everyone has has a feeling on this, and everyone has a stance on it. And when it was first announced, boy, there was uh, there was a big reaction. Do you feel that uh, things are settling a bit? Do you feel like you're convincing some people who perhaps may have been doubters at the start? Yeah, look, you certainly had a big energy relief back in, um, you know, two years ago, and that's understandable. Look, for a lot of people, this is um, pretty close to them. It's pretty dear to them. Um, it can be an emotional topic, um, you know, and that's something we, we understand and we try and be very sensitive um, to and respectful of. But, look, I think there's certainly, there are some groups, um, you know, who, who have formed and are pretty hardened in their, their opposition, and as we say, we we kind of respect that. Um, they've got some pretty firm views and sent some pretty firm messages. But, you know, we also recognise there's a lot of other people out there who have been really curious about it. Um, and the more we get out and talk to people and the way we talk to them, um, there is that level of curiosity to find out some more. And I think people are, you know, are really genuinely interested to find out, you know, is, is this thing going to have, have legs, you know? People at the start sort of said, you know, is it genius or madness? And we're, we're still trying yes. to work our way through that. <laughs> you know, I think that was the general feeling. It was like, is this a joke, Taris? International Airport? Come on. Yeah, look, and I, look I, can, and I can understand why people um, think that because, you know, we're very used to seeing Taris and look in other parts of the country for those sorts of things um, in a particular way. And when we think about a different future, it's it's really challenging and it takes a little bit of time to get your head around but you know when we thought about that site um you know it had some really good characteristics and things that we think are really important you know, it's it's a really good size which lets us think about um, what can you accommodate on there um, in the future and that's about design um, energy resilience you know lots of really good things it's it's not immediately surrounded by large residential populations, um, which is really important. Um, that's challenging for the small population that is there, um, but mm. it's a feature of large, um, large items. But you know, the really important thing is when we stood back and looked at what Central Otago looked like into the 30-year future, which is what you think about these projects, and you don't think about them today. You think about what it looked like 30, 50 years ahead. Um, that that's. 30 k's from where the middle of um, central Otago sits and where it will continue to grow around and we think that's a really smart, sensible way to start exploring that. Mm. You know, you look at Terrace, I stop there a lot uh, if I'm driving up to Christchurch and uh, it's it's charming, it's quaint, it's got a little school uh, with a, a tiny role but uh, I've been and done a story at that school years ago for TV3 and, it, and they really loved that school and there, there were people saying that yep. they were very concerned that the school wouldn't survive and even the, the town itself would kind of be be overshadowed or, or almost destroyed. Can you Can you reassure people about those concerns? Yeah, look, Terrace is a lovely place. Um, and it's got really good people um, and that's one of the things that's you know come through and we've been privileged to spend um, time with them and we want to be able to do everything we can to um, to keep protecting and enhancing the values um, that that local community um, you know feels a lot of people within the community as well look at their community and ask questions about what's its future look like 
um, anyway and what sort of prospects does it have for their children, for their children's children. So they're interested about um, those things. You know, we want to work hard around... Um, you, you won't hear information from us um, uh, around things like the school. Those aren't our... Um, decisions. I think mm -hmm. unfortunately there's a little bit of misinformation around aspects like that that comes out from time to time. Um, you know, you, you're in Queenstown. Um, there's, there's schools not too distant from, from Queenstown Airport. True. We've got schools near us in Christchurch. Um, you know, they can, you know, they can coexist. You have to work hard. You have to look after um, the well-being of the of the children in there, but um, they're not mutually exclusive, as, as a lot of people would say. I liked that comment you made in the newsroom article, which was really good, and that was the one that was headlined, you know, Fog uh, Partially Lifts on Ambitious Christchurch Airport Plan. And you said that, you know, we're not building Heathrow. Uh, the buildings will yeah. be modest. You sta yeah. stand and by I think that? that's right. I, oh, look, absolutely. Um, and, you know, if you think about... Um, you know, airports. And I think this is the opportunity with a nice greenfield site where you can do things really well um, from the start. You're not stuck with what's been done in the past. You know, a lot of our airports are, are almost accidental by nature rather than well thought through um, and they're planned a long time in the past. So having that space enables you to do smart things. And ultimately, you're talking about a stretch of um, runway somewhere between, you know, two, two and a half kilometres, wherever we land on that, um, and then some modest buildings. And, you know, in 2020 uh, and beyond, if you can't design smart modular buildings um, that work well within landscapes, you're getting things wrong. And, you know, okay. we're really clear so about that. you're committed to that? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, noise is always an issue, isn't it? Uh, you know, that's what people get concerned about. But I guess yep. you could also argue that uh, aircraft are becoming quieter. I think they will. Look, we're getting to the, the long tail of improvements that you can make on, um, you know, aircraft for noise. They've, they've done really, really well over the last 30 years to get them get them to a point. But, you know, they're still moving through the airspace um, and they'll still make noise. Um, one of the things with noise, though, is you kind of have to also be conscious of the environment that you're in um, and some of the noise that um, already exists. Um, you know, that area we're next to two state highways at the moment, um, you know, there is, it, it's not um, completely without noise. This will be new noise and for some people it will be a, a dramatic change. Um, so you, you work around that. Um, you know, we're used to working with neighbours um, to try to make their life as, um, you know, as bearable as possible living next to airports. Mm. I mean, you've already invested a, a fair bit of money into this, and I, I bet, I bet it t took uh, you know, uh, it took a lot of courage, I suppose, to to start committing to this idea and uh, and pushing it forward. Uh, do you think that anything can stop it now? Yes. Um, look, it's a t I think you might have said at the start, you know, it, it, it's a tough gig um, and that's a good thing. Um, it's got to get through a lot of gateways. Um, some of them are ours. Um, we've always said at the start, this has got to be investable. Um, you know, people talk about us, um, you know, being if, if this is financially irresponsible. A decision won't go ahead if it's financially irresponsible. Um, we've bought some land at the moment. We're committing to, committed to exploring it. We're 100% committed to exploring it, but we haven't made any decisions about um, whether we'll invest. Um, you, you know, you've, and we've got to get through approvals. Um, that's again, that's a tough thing in New Zealand, and and for good reason. You've got to get through a whole lot of environmental um, hurdles. You've got to demonstrate that all the benefits you've claimed for the um, for the community and the region will work. Um, yes, a lot of a lot of hurdles to, to get through. So mm. yeah, it it it, it could stop. Mm, that's right. It's it's just ongoing, and uh, I guess yep. I guess the more work you do, uh, perhaps the more issues you might you might kind of uncover but that's something that uh, that I assume you 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 allowed for in, in your planning in the first place absolutely and look we learn we learn lots on a regular basis and actually a lot of things we learn are just from having conversations with people on the ground we have a whole range of experts doing some things so it's quite nice to um, you know check some of those um, things and and get a bit of sense um, from from locals and around that as well mm. um, but yeah, look, there's definitely, you know, we're in it for the, um, for the long haul um, and we'll find some things out and we'll have, to, we'll probably come across things along the way that we need to, um, 
adjust or um, you know make some changes around and that's why we haven't come at this with a you know really firm fixed mindset that says this is what's happening on this day in the future. Mm. You know, it's interesting, uh, some of the detractors, for example, uh, Norm Thompson, uh, he, he's the former Deputy Chief Executive of Air New Zealand, he said that, uh, oh, how, oh, just just looking at how he put it, he, he, he just says there's no need for a terrorist terminal because he said you've got, you've got Christchurch, you know, and then you've got Queenstown, Dunedin and Invercargill. What do you say to that? Well, of course, Norm's just... Um not long ago finished a term as um, a director of Queenstown Airport as well so you'd probably expect um, Say that. Probably a comment <laughs> by that um, I think um, it, it, all of this comes back to the question that you're asking right from the start um, they're serving quite different purposes an airport at Christchurch doesn't serve the people of um, Queenstown um, and Central Otago other than in particular ways Dunedin and Invercargill are fantastic airports for the people of Dunedin and Invercargill they're not going to deal with um, people of um, Central Otago as that population continues to grow um, I don't think the people of um, Central Otago um, will welcome the prospect of um, their trips to Auckland being via Dunedin or Invercargill. You know, this is a part of the country that makes nearly 50% more domestic trips than anywhere else in the country. Um, mm. you know, and, you know, to, to make comments like that, I don't think reflects um, the future that people have in mind where air connectivity is just so important to those communities. Because the reality is, if you, if you get to that point, um, mm. it's locals that will get um, um, priced out by airlines in this game. Right. Yeah, that's a good point, isn't it? What? Yeah, there's only, if, you've, if you're capacity constrained and you've only got so many seats, um, the highest paying person's going to get those. And I think it would be a shame, oh, we really feel it would be a shame um, if you lose some of that, um, you know, great travel for all um, and it becomes the, the game for um, the elite. That's right. Yeah, that's um, definitely not not the way we want to when we want to head. What about concerns uh, about traffic? You know, bottlenecks in the gorge with with passengers landing at Taras, and yep. perhaps they're all going to scoot down to Queenstown. Now, how, how, uh, should we be should we locals be concerned about this? I, I think it's a really valid question for people to be asking, and it's one of the things we're um, doing a lot of work um, on. Obviously, there's problems that exist at the moment, which um, you'll all be sort of very familiar with living every day. Mm. Um, you know, and a lot of those problems actually sort of, um, and from the work we've been doing, don't actually exist within the gorge. They exist on the Queenstown side of the gorge. So there's questions around, um, you know, what actual additional impacts will this be? Um, yeah, and there's a range of scenarios which is you do nothing um, or you're building other sort of parts so you're trying to work out what's the overall um, additional impact of that but yeah, the gorge is, a, is an area of real attention to us um, but yeah, let's not lose sight of the fact as well I think something like 70% um, of people who come to Queenstown are coming by car so those you know, like um, Norm Thompson and others who suggest that um, Invercargill, Dunedin and Christchurch are better solutions um, you're simply forcing the same people who are arriving in our country and, and travelling within our country to travel by road so um, you know, they will be on that road um, and we, you know, moving them by air is probably more efficient yeah, I I, I, um, I hear you, and you make you make some very very good points. You know, it's interesting because the the other thing that's come up. I won't keep you too much longer, but um, it's it's such a good. Um, I cannot believe you're on the phone. It's like you're in the studio, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Are you on the landline? I am on a, an old school landline actually on, you my, see? on my computer. But yeah. see, I'd have seen if I was in the studio, I'd have got to see the sort of the the new romantic for country <laughs> line dance. <often. laughs> Yeah, well, it might be a good thing that you can't see it, actually. <laughs> I was hoping you didn't hear that comment. But, you know, um, I can't... Yes, well, good old landlines, let's bring them back because, honestly, cell phones are useless and uh, it's so lovely and clear and it's great to have this, this time with you because I know you've been travelling around a wee but Look, you are in Central quite recently, weren't you? And I suppose, uh, you know, you've attended the meetings and what have you. Uh, and, and I wonder, how do you deal with someone who's really emotionally invested in this and, uh, and, and angry and, and, and doesn't want it to happen in any way, shape or form? How can you assuage the, those feelings? Um, 
look, that's a difficult thing. I think the first thing you do is you have to acknowledge that um, for, for some people is a really emotional topic. Um, and, you know, you're not going to hear me criticise those um, people because um, it's, you know, I, I may well feel the same in, in, in their shoes. So um, I think that's the first thing. We do try and, um, <clears throat> you know, we listen as well as we can. We can't put ourselves um, in their shoes, but we can um, we can listen and we try and do that um, as respectfully as we can. That is why, actually, you know, we get a lot of criticism from time to time for not fronting to, like, big town hall meetings. Um, we often find those are outlets for that, and some of the richest conversations I've had with people have just been one-on-one. -on -one. Um, mm. And actually, what matters what matters to people doesn't always come out um, in those in those scenarios. So, like, we want to be real about this. We're humans. Um, we want to deal with this in a in a very um, in a human way, and and do our best to get a good outcome. And and as we've always said, you know, that that outcome might be that this doesn't that doesn't happen. But um, we really do think it's worth exploring. We think not exploring it um, will simply see us having some regrets in the future, wishing that we'd had this conversation years ago. That's moved ahead. Years and years ago, wasn't there some plan to build uh, a, a wide-body jet runway near Twizel? Um, I haven't heard the um, I haven't heard the Twizel ones. Um, hmm. You know, you get lots of um, you get lots of um, ideas. I, I don't think you'd quite you just wouldn't hit it in Twizel because you don't have that kind of growing population to draw from because you're trying to sort of build mm. I think people get obsessed with this just being about sort of visitors it's not um, you know by and large these relate to how we use airports ourselves whether that's about carrying people and freight where they want to go or just connecting our communities and actually places like Twizel it's a beautiful spot here in North Glee to land something and you've got no obstacles um, True. But you probably haven't got the you haven't got the demand or the cause to have it there Mm. And, th and there was a question mark about fog in Taras. That that raised its head too in a few a few articles I read. Is that a, a real concern, or is it no worse there than than in Queenstown? I think that's the point. It's actually you know our, our um, and look, we're getting some we've got some good weather station and other technology on the site. We're really looking at that, but um, it's no worse, and actually it's surprisingly better than some um, locations. But gee, we sit here in Christchurch. I mean, how many times this year have you seen? You know, if you've got fog in um, Auckland Airport, then you've got fog at Queenstown Airport, whether you like it or not. True. Um, mm. You know, fogs are just one of those many reasons that come along um, and disrupt flights. You try and keep those to a minimum. Um, but we think at a new airport, um, so first of all, you want to check that the fog's not a major actual existing weather condition. And then where it is, you've, you've got technology on planes, um, you've got pilot training, and you get on-ground te um, technology that almost lets you fly in the right circumstances and zero visibility. So if you can do those things in a, um, in a greenfield environment or a brand new air, um, airfield, mm. that actually removes any of those um, challenges. But it's, an, it's a really regular phenomenon for, for airports generally. Well, that's right. It's interesting, you know, I started thinking, so say if, you know, you might have been on the occasional flight into Queenstown that's possibly had to be diverted, because <laughs> it does happen. Yeah. But I'm thinking, like, say the weather's really dire in Queenstown, but, I mean, you could divert a flight to, to Taras, couldn't you? Absolutely. <laughs> to be a bit handier, instead of going all the way yeah. back to, <laughs> to Christchurch, Invercargill, right. or Auckland. So Absolutely. That's, that's a plus. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we uh, hope a few more pluses. <laughs> that's right. That's um, that's a very sort of random sideline that uh, really probably isn't relevant to the issue. So, so let's uh, let, let's um, uh, wrap this up. So, d as it stands at the moment, you're looking to hopefully start building 2027. Yeah. Look. So our, our our key milestone for us next is to um, over the next sort of 12 and 18 months get ourselves to the point that we've got enough information to go and seek a. Um, an approval, so like a resource consent, and and if we haven't got the right amount of information, then we'll keep we'll keep getting it. So, we think if we get to that point and pass through that gateway, that'll take us a few years, three three four years or so after that, and then you'd look to build um, towards that. But the key things you get through each gateway um, and, and build that case up. I mean, you're holding the land, aren't you? So uh, yep. you've you've secured that. If it doesn't, yeah, and, and for yeah. us. Mm, that's right. That's it really important. We're not we're not going anywhere. Um, we've got that land, and the answers might be, Leanne, that actually this is um, this isn't right for today, but it is right for tomorrow, and we can wait till 
tomorrow. We've been sitting on land up here for you know 80 years and having that amount of land down there um, and it's and it's useful land. Um, you know we can we can wait to the right time because it probably does feel more that it's a um, it's a when rather than an if question. Mm, and uh, y- you know, if I guess uh, the studies say you get down the track and you're like, okay, it's a no go, you sell the land. Well, it's here. It's, I mean, I don't think anyone, uh, I don't think anyone um, sees investing in land in central Otago as a bad thing at the moment, man. Ah, uh, no, actually, you're right. <laughs> hmm. I wonder what other uses we could have for this land <laughs> when you think oh, of look, it. There's lots. Oh, I think it's lots. It's in a really good, it is a really good location. And, you know, when you talk about the population of um, Central Otago needing to double uh, or is going to double over the next sort of 20, 30 years, that's a lot of people who are going to come into the area and it's going to look really different. Mm. Oh, it's really interesting. I find the whole subject quite fascinating because I'm, I'm just trying to imagine it, uh, knowing little terraces I do and spending time there sort of uh, mostly for the Shrek story, which was its <laughs> main claim to fame in the past. And it's, uh, it, it's crazy because a lot of people know about Taris uh, because of that sheep. They certainly do. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. So my last question to you, Michael, is will there be a T-shirt, Taris International Airport? <laughs> like, you know, who knows? London, yeah, who Paris, knows? Um, Taris. Yeah, that would be quite good. I was going to say I'm not sure I'd be the, um, the designer and certainly not the model um, that will um, display it. But look, I think in all seriousness, if we... Um, if we got to that point, um, and there is a um, there is a, a new Central Otago Airport at Taras, then, um, and if there is a T-shirt, then it means we've probably answered a whole lot of questions the right way, um, and it's been the right thing to do. So, you know, if there is, I'd be happy to um, line up and um, buy one. Yeah, I, I think it, it'd be um, something that you'd have to do if this if this comes into being. Uh, then I think that's. Uh, Probably something that uh, should be on on your list, but you know they used to there used to be tits uh, in Queenstown just with ZQN on them, which I thought was very cool. Yeah. You know, just yeah, the, the cool sign. Cool. It is so. Uh, there, there's uh, you know, ways ways and means. But Michael Singleton, it's been really good to talk today. It really, really has. And um, the project director of Taras Airport, and I hope you have a, a really nice weekend. Excellent. Thanks so much, and lovely to chat, Leanne. Great stuff. Thank you.